And then this video is for first time quail owners. Um, so if you're incubating eggs or you're thinking about getting quail, hopefully this video will help you be successful at your journey in raising quail. I've been raising quail for quite the, uh, some years now and have been very, very successful at it. Um, as I have stated in many of my other videos, my way is not the only way. So by no means do you have to do everything the way that I'm doing it. Um, this way works for me. You may find better and easier ways to do things. Um, but this video is in particular about raising baby quail. Um, they can be very, very, very fragile. Um, I was chatting with one of my YouTube subscribers earlier today, and that is what made me uh, decide to make this video. Um, Zoe's Homestead, so if you haven't seen that channel, um, check it out. He is more than likely going to comment on this video, so you'll be able to find his channel um, through the comments of this video. Um, great channel, though. has a lot of gardening stuff. He raises chickens, he raises rabbits, and he will soon be raising quail. He's got quail eggs in his incubator right now as we speak. This is his very, very first time incubating, um, and this is also going to be his very first time raising quail. Um, so I want to make this video and help him and help you as well um, with y'all's journey on raising quail. So you're going to need a few uh, supplies uh, prior to your quail arriving. Um, depending on their age, you're going to need a brooder and or caging system, um, both at some point. Um, you'll need bedding, you'll need food and water, um, and you're going to need a heat lamp. Quail, especially as babies from that uh, hatch to the first week of life, they are extremely dependent on heat. I cannot express to you enough how dependent on heat they are. Um, usually by about three weeks old, they're able to be removed from heat. But that one and two week olds, they are going to need um, heat. They will not survive without it. So let's start out by um, Here is my brooder. Um, it is a six foot brooder. It's got a divider in the middle. This allows me to be able to house four different age groups of quail. Um, I have found over the years of raising quail that I can keep them together as long as they're only a week apart. And since I have 100 to 120 quail come out of my incubator every single week, um, I always have two different uh, age groups here and then two different age groups over here. Um, this is the side that requires the heat lamp. This is the side that does not require the heat lamp. Um, over here we have December 15th and December 8th. And let's see if I can find some in here to show you the size difference of December 8th. I don't have very many December 15ths left in here. They, Most of them have sold. There we go, right there. That is a December 15th, that little Speedy Gonzalez right there. Um, the bigger ones that it's standing next to are the December uh, 8th quilt. So as you can see, within a week, it makes a huge difference on their size. Um, they have pine shavings in their brooder as bedding. Um, pine shavings absorb the moisture in their poop very, very well. Um, their poop is very wet compared to chickens, so you need something to absorb that moisture. Helps keep the smell down um, and helps keep it nice and dry. Um, if you don't clean out your brooders very regularly, what you will notice with quail is that the poop is going to cake to their feet. Um, it will actually dry, cut the circulation off their toes, and their toes can fall off actually. Um, they will survive. Um, but you don't want your quail's toes falling off, so make sure you clean those brooders out. Um, feed. I do a 30% game bird starter feed. Um, some people crumble it up even smaller. I have not ever had to do that. Um, if you feel that that's necessary, by all means, crumble it up even smaller. Just be careful not to crumble it so much that it is a powder form, um, and then it is wasted. Um, they do not like the powder um, so much as they like the actual pieces of food. Um, for waterers, um, quail can drown. These things are totally ignorant. Um, so if you have a regular chicken waterer, then you're gonna wanna put rocks, marbles, beads, or something like that in there to prevent them from drowning. I use quail bases actually. Um, and as you can see, this base here is just big enough that my finger will fit in there. Um, this helps prevent them from drowning. Now, by no means does that uh, foolproof it, um, I have still had a few actually drowned in this little bitty base, but it is less likely that they drowned in this little base versus a regular chicken water. But like I said before, if you don't want to buy the quail bases, that is totally okay, but do add something into that base um, to keep them from drowning because I guarantee you at some point, if it doesn't happen on your first batch, it will happen. You will have quail drown on a regular chicken water um, when they are at this particular age here. Now, over here in this side, we have quail that are December 1st and December, or sorry, November 24th. 
once they get to this age I have pulled them off of a heat lamp um, and sometimes you're able to pull them off even a little earlier it kind of depends on the time of the year and where you are brooding them at in the summers I brood outside um, so at two weeks I can usually pull them off of a heat lamp because it is so hot that I will end up baking them if I have a heat lamp on them now they have the same feeder um, and they over here they definitely do not need their uh, feed crushed up anymore um, the November 24th they are almost to full size um, so they can eat that feed just fine but they do have a regular five quart chicken water I have personally never ever had any quail at this particular age drowned not to say that it can't happen so if you want to leave your rocks and marbles or whatever you've put in your your water base to prevent them from drowning you can leave them in there but um, I have found that at this age they are not going to drown more than likely um, so you can go ahead and pull those things out um, they also have pine shavings I cannot stress enough to you how much quail poop um, they are going to run through the feed like you would not believe and they poop so much like they, they poop more than what they eat um, it makes no sense at all um, if you've seen some of my other videos, I did one specifically about quail poop and having a plan of what to do with it. Um, and I want to remind you in this video, um, if you're going to get into owning quail, have a plan for what you plan to do with the poop. Um, there is going to be so much of it. If you have a compost, that is absolutely wonderful. You can compost it down just as you can chicken poop and rabbit poop and all of that. Um, depending on how many quail you raise though, and I raise way more quail, um, than the size of my compost um, I have to come up with alternative ways to dispose of my quail poop they produce way more than I'm able to compost there's way too much nitrogen versus how much carbon I'm able to put into those things um, so come up with those plans um, prior to getting your birds quail can fly um, they fly a little bit better than a chicken but not as good as a blue jay. Um, that's the best way I know how to describe it. And um, so whatever, um, when you have them in a brooder, that first week, it doesn't necessarily have to have a top on it. By week number two, they are going to be trying to fly a little bit. They, you, won't, you will notice that they can't get off the ground very much, but they are going to be uh, lifting those legs up off the ground and getting a little bit of air. Um, at this particular age, they can fly, fly pretty well, actually. Um, and by the time they hit six to eight weeks, um, they can fly typically all the way across your yard and then you'll notice that they go back down and then they'll be able to lift back up. They can fly as high as a house even and get on top of the house. Um, so whatever permanent caging that you are um, planning, make sure that it is completely enclosed. They can be raised in cages, they can be raised on the ground, but it just needs to be completely enclosed. Um, I do get asked quite often um, can they be raised with chickens? I have personally never raised them with chickens, so I cannot um, answer that question very effectively. I would not raise them with chickens, though. Um, they are not a very big bird, and because they do fly, um, the chickens are more than likely going to um, bully them and peck on them. Um, they are ground dwellers. They don't go into coops. They don't really lay in nesting areas or anything like that. Um, so it's not ideal, I don't believe, to raise them with chickens. Not to say that it can't be done, um, but it's it's not ideal, um, I don't believe, to raise the quail with, uh, with chickens. All right, so we are going to wrap up this video. Um, hopefully this video has helped you um, in some sort of way. If you're going to raise quail, though, and you're, and you're getting little bitty babies and you're hatching them out and all of that, don't get discouraged. Um, it is bound to happen that you are going to lose a few um, take whatever survives get them to a laying age put those eggs into the incubator and hatch out some more um, and build your stock up um, they're great egg layers they're great for meat um, but they can be very 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 fragile in that first week of life and and I get it that can if you have death after death after death um, it can be very discouraging um, adding electrolytes to their water when they're very very young um, does help I'll show you the electrolyte that I use this is an electrolyte that I purchased at my tractor supply it's about five bucks it's an eight ounce bag so very cost efficient um, I have found when raising baby quail that as long as I put an electrolyte in their water for the first week of life um, they do very very well I have very few deaths um, when using electrolytes 
in their water versus not using electrolytes in their water. Um, give it a try. Raise a batch um, with electrolytes. Raise a batch without electrolytes and you'll see exactly what I mean. Um, that electrolyte gives them that extra boost that they really, really need at that young age. Um, they also need fresh water, so that's the reason why I have two in here. So one has fresh water, one has electrolyte water in it. Um, but that electrolyte, um, from my experience, does help quite a bit. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Don't forget to check out Zoe's um, Homestead. Like I said, he's going to more than likely comment on this video, so you'll be able to find his page through the comments on this video. Hopefully this helps you, Zoe. Hopefully this helps anybody that is getting into quail. Um, I will do some more videos in the future of raising baby quail, and I apologize now for kind of being all over the place. Um, sometimes I'm not the best at making these videos. I get scatterbrained and forget what I was going to say. But thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you like it, please subscribe.